And in my study of the Word of God, I've, I've come to, to seven things that I believe the Lord's Supper is. And uh, they all start with C, so you, maybe you can remember them that way. But the first one is the Lord's Supper is indeed a, a commemorative uh, meal. And this means that, uh, as Jesus said, we do this in remembrance of him. Or as Paul says, we proclaim Christ until he comes. We remember what he did. And so the Lord's Supper really is like a, a visual sermon to us uh, that uh, Jesus has come and died for our sins, that we might live forever with him. The second thing that the Lord's Supper is, is that it is a, a covenant meal. It's not only a remembrance of the Lord, it's not just a mere remembrance, but it is a means of grace by which we uh, come to the table and sit uh, before the Lord in a, a great way and renew our faith with him, and he renews his covenant with us. Uh, the scripture says that in Matthew, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. And in Luke's gospel, it is this cup is the new covenant in my blood. So he continues to confirm that covenant with us uh, through the meal as we come to him. And the Lord's Supper is not just a commemorative meal. It's not just a covenant meal and a renewal of the covenant meal. But it is a Christ-filled meal. And Jesus said, this is my body. And those uh, words, those four words, have been fought over among the Reformers and Christians and certainly between the Roman Catholic Church and Protestants for generations. What does that really mean, that the supper is his body? Uh, certainly the grammar of those words is inconclusive. We don't know just from the grammar what Jesus meant. But the context is really, really important. And I believe that Jesus was speaking symbolically there, but, but communally, and we'll get to that in just a minute, that uh, he it wasn't, doesn't really become literally the body and the blood of Christ as Roman Catholic teaching has historically said that. Uh, it certainly would have been very confusing for the disciples in the Last Supper to think that the elements actually changed into his body. Then his body was really there <laughs> and, and was also on the table at the same time. Uh, you know, we almost like to facetiously ask the question, uh, which body are we talking about, the Lord, here? Uh, you know, that would have been confusing and, and, and not what they would have been thinking. In fact, any, any good Jew would, if they thought Jesus was speaking literally to actually eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, they would have been aghast at that. They would have been uh, wondering, as they were in John chapter 6, if you look that up, they... The, the Jews were aghast and as Jesus spoke of eating his body and drinking his blood. But they didn't do that. And they're not uh, uh, taken off guard by Jesus' words there. There's no, there's no uh, objection here uh, of them. The Lord's Supper is more than just to think about Christ. It's more than just to believe in Christ. It, it is that, but it's to actually receive Christ. Uh, the Supper of Jesus seals himself and confirms himself uh, to us. As, as many have said, uh, Christ gives him his very self to us in uh, this uh, meal. And so we rejoice and know that the Lord is with us as we uh, come to the table and uh, partake of him spiritually by faith. And if we continue on with these seeds about the Lord's Supper, the fourth point is that it is a community meal or a collective meal. Uh, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17 says, There is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. And so that, it means that the Lord's Supper is a supper that we can't have alone. We can remember Christ alone, and we should, but when we come to the table, we are remembering him together. We're proclaiming his death until he comes together. Uh, Jesus says he wants all of us to take of it, all of you. He wants us to come together uh, and to show that we are one body and one family, uh, one church. And so it's a good opportunity for us to uh, confess our sins against others as we come and, 
make sure that we're right with one another, that we forgive one another, uh, and to maintain that, that uh, a bond of pre peace that the Lord wants us to keep. And then fifthly, the Lord's Supper is a continual meal. First uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26 says, For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, uh, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Uh, at, in Valley Press, we take it at this point every other week. Uh, but it should not be infrequent. That would be, that would be, that would be wrong. <laughs> but we come and we continually take it. There's one baptism, Ephesians 4, 6. But there are many times when we come together. And we should come as often uh, as, as we can to the table. Uh, I think John Calvin was one that did want it weekly, didn't get it from the Geneva Council, uh, but he had, had great wisdom. At one point, uh, he said that we should do it as often as the uh, capacity of the people will allow. Well, sixthly, uh, the Lord's Supper is a contemplative meal. And what do we contemplate? We are contemplating the future. We're looking to that great day when the Lord will sit down with uh, his people and he will, we will be in his physical presence then in a great way. And uh, it will no longer be a, a spiritual uh, meal that we take by faith, but we'll, we'll have sight, we'll see the Lord in all his glory. And, and Jesus says, I won't take of this meal again with you until that day when I sit down with you, you know, with, uh, on the day when the kingdom is fully come. And so uh, as we come to the Lord's Supper, we're not just looking back to what Christ did for us in history, dying for our sins, but we're also looking forward to that great day. This meal uh, of the Lord's Supper anticipates a greater meal, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then finally and seventhly, the Lord's Supper is a coming home meal. Uh, we should always remember that we are coming back uh, to Christ. Uh, this is similar to a, a, one of the other points about covenant renewal, but I, I want to make sure we show that it is, it is something that we are coming back to, that uh, we're coming back as sinners to our Savior, and we never come to the table because we're perfect or because it's, we've been so faithful that week. We come to the table because we are sinners, and we need, we need the Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and so the the table is not for perfect Christians. And I, I, my heart aches for those who don't come to the table because they think that uh, they have uh, sinned too much or sinned a particular sin. If we're willing to let that sin go and, and confess it before the Lord and ask him to forgive us, then we are not only welcome at the table, we should be there. We're part of his body and we should come. And so the Lord's Supper is for lifelong repenters. Uh, it is uh, uh, for those who are tired and weary uh, on their way as they we move closer and closer to the promised land. Uh, it is a table set for us, as I believe one person put it, uh, in the wilderness where we come. So we don't come because we're good and because we're so great as Christians. Uh, we want to be better, and we want to be good in God's sight, but we're only good through Christ's righteousness. And so we come as sinners to our Savior. So it's a coming home meal. Many people ask, uh, what does it really mean to take of the Lord's Supper in a worthy manner? And in that context of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, certainly it does mean that we examine ourselves, that we look and see uh, and make sure that we're trusting Christ and Him alone, and that we're not living in any uh, unrepented, conscious sin, uh, that we're not willing this very moment to give up uh, in the name of Christ. In fact, probably the, uh, the best way to remember if we're ready to take the Lord's Supper is if we do feel that we are, haven't performed well, but we're trusting Christ and His performance for us. We're looking outside ourselves to him and what he did for us. And we're worthy by, by, by being and knowing that we're unworthy 
Uh, one lady at the end of the a sermon that I gave on this said that. Let me get this straight. That we're, we're worthy to come to the table when we realize that we're unworthy to come to the table. And she had gotten the point beautifully and said it better than I did. Uh, that's what we are saying when we come unworthy. We're not talking about any type of antinomianism, of just living in sin and it's okay as long as you just come back to church. Uh, no, we, the Lord uh, wants us to stay away from any of that. Uh, but we realize we have not uh, been faithful. We don't come to the table because we're faithful. We come to the table because Jesus is faithful and has died for our sins.